Steven Seiler, a sports scientist, has spent decades studying the world's best athletes and has observed that there are valuable lessons that the average person can learn from them. He emphasizes the importance of sustainable training and the art of the long game, which involves developing a routine that allows for sustainable exercise, eating, sleep, and work. He notes that elite athletes have clear performance goals and have learned to manage stress, intensity, and duration in their training to achieve sustainable performance. The 80-20 rule, also known as the polarized training model, is a key principle that Seiler has observed in elite athletes. He notes that 80% of their training is at low intensities, while only 20% is at high intensities. This approach allows them to develop a sustainable training program that supports long-term performance and health. Seiler explains that the 80% low-intensity training involves routines that allow athletes to maintain a flat heart rate, have conversations, and feel ready for meals after their workouts. This low-intensity training helps athletes manage stress and maintain a sustainable routine. Seiler also discusses the concept of high-intensity interval training, height, and acknowledges that it has become popular in recent years. However, he cautions that excessive focus on HIT can lead to burnout, injuries, and other negative effects. He explains that there is a bias in sports science research towards HIT, which has contributed to the popularity of this training method. He emphasizes the need to balance high-intensity training with low-intensity training for sustainable performance and health. The conversation then delves into the three-zone model of training, which includes low, medium, and high-intensity zones. In the low-intensity zone, athletes are able to have conversations, maintain a flat heart rate, and feel ready for meals after their workouts. This zone represents sustainable training that can be maintained for extended periods. In the medium-intensity zone, athletes experience an increase in lactate production, indicating a transition to higher intensity. This zone is often referred to as the threshold zone and can be sustained for shorter durations compared to the low intensity zone. Finally, the high intensity zone involves intense workouts that lead to significant increases in heart rate, breathing, and perceived exertion. This zone is not sustainable for long periods and can lead to increased stress and fatigue. The conversation highlights the importance of spending the majority of training time in the low intensity zone as it promotes sustainable performance and health. Seiler encourages individuals to use simple indicators, such as the ability to have conversations during exercise to gauge their training intensity. He also emphasizes the need for a balanced approach to training, incorporating both low and high intensity workouts to achieve optimal results. Dr. Seiler continues by highlighting the importance of establishing a training routine and habit. He advises individuals to start with a commitment to a certain number of training sessions per week, taking into account their work and family commitments. This frequency is the foundation upon which the rest of the training plan will be built. Once the frequency is established, Dr. Seiler suggests gradually increasing the duration of certain training sessions. He explains that the difference between a 30-minute workout and a 60-minute workout can have significant physiological effects such as increased fat utilization and molecular signaling for adaptation. By gradually extending the duration of workouts, individuals can tap into their body's biochemistry and build endurance. Dr. Seiler also discusses the concept of heart rate drift, which refers to the increase in heart rate over the course of a prolonged workout at a constant intensity. He explains that as the duration of a workout increases, the relative intensity may also increase, leading to greater physiological stress. However, with consistent training, individuals can build durability and capacity within the green zone, allowing them to sustain longer periods of low-intensity exercise. The podcast delves into the relationship between training intensity and the body's stress response. Dr. Seiler emphasizes the need to manage the balance between adaptive signals for physiological improvements and systemic stress. He explains that green zone training provides a high adaptive response with low stress, allowing for effective training without excessive strain on the body. By managing the stress load in the training program, individuals can optimize their recovery and overall fitness. Seiler shares his experience coaching his daughter, 
and the importance of understanding individual personalities when encouraging healthy behaviors. He discusses the need to give athletes, especially perfectionists, permission to rest and recover, as well as the importance of managing stress levels to optimize training outcomes. The podcast delves into the concept of heart rate variability, HRV, as a measure of stress and recovery. Seiler explains that HRV can provide insights into the balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system activation, offering a window into the body's stress response. He cautions against becoming too reliant on HRV measurements and emphasizes the need to use them as a guide rather than a strict performance metric. The use of wearables and fitness trackers is also discussed, with Seiler highlighting the limitations of these devices in measuring and estimating various physiological parameters. He warns against becoming overly reliant on readiness scores and other metrics provided by wearables, as they may not always be accurate or reliable. Seiler discusses the relationship between performance and health, emphasizing that maintaining performance levels can contribute to overall health and well-being especially as individuals age. He highlights the importance of maintaining muscle mass, mobility, and functional movement as individuals get older. Seiler encourages individuals to focus on strength training, mobility, and flexibility to support their overall health and longevity. Seiler offers practical advice for individuals who engage in weekend warrior activities, such as running or cycling. He suggests reducing the number of high-intensity sessions and incorporating more low-intensity training to improve performance and prevent burnout. Seiler encourages individuals to assess their sleep, energy levels, and overall performance to gauge the impact of their training distribution. Seiler provides guidance for individuals who struggle to engage in regular physical activity. He emphasizes the importance of starting small and gradually building a habit of movement. Seiler encourages individuals to pat themselves on the back for taking small steps, such as going for a short walk, and to focus on creating a sustainable habit of physical activity. Seiler emphasizes the concept of intensity discipline, which involves balancing high-intensity and low-intensity training to achieve optimal performance and health. He encourages individuals to approach training with a mindset of leaving some reps in reserve meaning that they don't have to push themselves to the point of exhaustion in every session. Seiler highlights the long-term benefits of maintaining intensity discipline and finding a sustainable training balance.